So now we're going to focus our attention on gases. And of course, uh, gases um, do not have a defined volume or uh, shape. Um, they are very compressible because of the space in between them. The individual uh, gas molecules have quite a bit of distance between them uh, depending on their pressure. And so they are compressible unlike um, solids and liquids are to... Um, so those liquids are much, 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 much less compressible than gases. And so uh, it turns out that uh, temperature um, and pressure uh, are going to affect uh, gases a great deal. And so that's what we're going to focus our attention on in these next uh, few uh, videos. Uh, one unit of measurement that's going to be very important for gases, and that is, of course, pressure. Okay. So pressure... Uh, can be calculated by uh, the force over the area, surface area. So let's uh, think about a, a balloon, a gas sample. So there's individual gas molecules uh, inside of that balloon, and they strike the inside of that container, uh, the balloon in this uh, instance, with a force, and the surface area of that uh, interaction um, dictates the pressure. The... Um, pressure of this uh, inside the uh, balloon is going to be dictated by a couple of uh, different factors, including temperature um, and volume, uh, which we'll talk about um, shortly. But first, let's talk about units. So one of the first uh, instruments uh, designed to uh, measure the pressure, especially that of the atmosphere, was is a barometer. Okay. And so a barometer had a, has, still used quite a bit, a pool of mercury in um, a small reservoir at the bottom of this instrument. And what they do is they put a evacuated glass tube inside this mercury sample. And so it's a bit evacuated, so there's no air inside of it. And so what happens is that the atmosphere, the air, pushes the mercury up this tube. And the uh, higher the pressure of air, the more air there is, the higher the, the mercury will rise up this tube. And so the pressure of, atmosphere, of the atmosphere is actually measured in distance, or how high, the mercury uh, traveled up this uh, glass tube. And so the units are millimeters of mercury. How many millimeters the mercury rose up this uh, tube? Uh, we can also call that unit the millimeter mercury tor. So anytime you see a tor, that's actually the same thing as a millimeter mercury. <coughs> um, at sea level, um, atmospheric pressure is 760 torr. So atmospheric pressure equals 760 torr, or 760 millimeters mercury. All right. Uh, we can use a sort of just a unit for convenience and say that is the pressure of one atmosphere. And so that atmosphere, ATM, is another unit of pressure that we often use. So ATM is atmospheres, one atmosphere, and that is equal to 760 torr, 760 um, millimeters of mercury. Other units that you might uh, see are the um, PSIs, so uh, pounds per square inch, 14.7. PSI, pounds per square inch, is equal to one atmosphere. 
So the last time you uh, inflated either bike tires or car tires, you inflated it to a certain uh, PSI level, pounds per square inch. That is also a unit of pressure. That really boils down to the calculation uh, for pressure. Pounds is the unit of force, square inches is the area, so pounds per square inch is the pressure. All right, so um, now we've talked about how different uh, properties of gases affect each other. Um, and these are, are summarized in what is known as the gas laws. And the first gas law we'll talk about is Boyle's law, which tells us the relationship between uh, pressure and volume of a gas with everything else being constant. All right, so uh, this uh, law or this relationship uh, can be best described when we look at a plot of these two features. So if we plotted pressure as a function of volume for a gas, it turns out uh, that as you increase the pressure, the volume decreases. And so our plot looks something like this. At low pressures, we've got high volumes. At high pressures, we've got low volumes. This should make sense if you think about a balloon or any ball. What would happen to the volume if you increase the pressure on the outside, if you squeeze the outside? Well, of course, the volume would go down. And so, um, if we increase the pressure, the volume would go down. That uh, relationship is called an inversely proportional relationship. So we can say that volume is inversely proportional to pressure. We can, um, well, what that basically says is that if you increase the pressure, the volume goes down. And if we decrease the pressure, the volume goes up. We can mathematically uh, say that by the fact that uh, volume is proportional. That's the Greek letter alpha, which we use as a proportionality constant. Volume is proportional to the inverse of pressure. So when we see this statement, we would read it as volume is inversely proportional to pressure. We can actually get a, a calculation or an equation from Boyle's Law as well, or this relationship. Um, so the pressure uh, times the volume uh, at one point would be proportional or equal to a constant, which we will call K. We could do a second experiment where we also multiply the pressure times the volume. Uh, that would equal the same proportionality constant. And if these were two different experiments, say one and two, we could uh, label the pressure in our first experiment as P1, the volume in our second or excuse me, the volume in our first experiment is V1, P1, V1. The pressure in our second experiment is P2, the volume in our second experiment as V2. And since these both of these functions are equal to the same constant, we get an expression that says, P1, V1 equals P2, V2. And so this equation gives us the ability to calculate a variable, say the pressure, if the volume has changed. So say we know the initial conditions of pressure and volume. We could ask what happens to the pressure if we do something to the volume, or essentially if we have three of the variables, we can always calculate the fourth. So let's try out one of these examples. All right, so the pressure of a five liters of five liters of a gas increases from 1.5 atmospheres to 3.75 atmospheres. What is the final volume of the gas? So um, our 
equation is P1V1 equals P2V2. The pressure of the gas, or of 5 liters of gas, so this is our initial volume, V1, increases from an initial pressure, that's going to be our P1, and then of course this final pressure would be our P2. So what are we looking for? We're looking for a final volume, or V2. Okay, so we need to solve for this, so we need to get V2 by itself, so we divide both sides by P2. So V2 equals P1 divided by V1, all over P2. Then we can just input our variables. All right, so P1 is 1.5 atmospheres. P1, or excuse me, V1 is 5.0 liters. P2 is 3.75 atmospheres. And if we notice, uh, our atmospheres will cancel out, leaving us with units of liters, which is a good unit for volume. And we just calculate this in our, throw this in our calculator. So 1.5 times 5 divided by 3.75 gives us 2. And so 2, well, we'll have to take that to 2. 0 liters for our final uh, answer with two significant figures. And that's how you perform this function.